Here we are again with an update on the continuing story of the fraudulent concealment and the guardianship case of Robert J. That's case CP0136. That's Essex County, New Jersey, probate, probate card. Judge Walter Kaprowski. Let's look up the word fraudulent. Fraudulent, that which is done with the intent to defraud. Deceitful. Fraudulent concealment. Con suppressing or hiding a material fact that one has a duty to communicate. Fraudulent conversion, embezzlement, fraudulent conveyance. Fraudulent conveyance is fraud and tra a transaction by means of which the owner of real or property or personal property attempts to put the property beyond the reach of his creditors. Fraudulent misrepresentation. Words spoken or written with the knowledge or belief that they are false and with the purpose of deceiving and inducing action and reliance. Now we have the case of guardian Vanessa D. Taylor of the Taylor Group of Manalapan, New Jersey, who has claimed in court papers through her attorney in December that no bills, no bills had been paid at all. Then we find out a few weeks later that apparently some bills had been paid to the nursing home in the amount of about four, five, six thousand dollars. So when Vanessa D. Taylor and her attorney, Shonda Floyd, represented in September, excuse me, December of 2010, that no bills had been paid, that statement could be interpreted as being fraudulent. Not only would Vanessa D. Taylor have known in December that bills had been paid, she had an obligation and duty to communicate that to next of kin and obviously she knew the bills had been paid because some of the bills had been paid since March of 2010 so you really can't say that you uh, made that statement by accident but as we know now the judge in this matter has asked that the uh, contract of sale that the guardian reapply for the sale of the property and as you know next of kin complained repeatedly that the sale and the uh, circumstances surrounding it were fraudulent and those circumstances of course were witnessed by James Boutelier attorney Lawrence Myerson attorney Shonda Floyd attorney and of course the guardian Vanessa D Taylor now the reason why we say Lawrence Myerson was involved is because there's numerous telephone conferences and mail contacts that were made with Lawrence Myerson during the time that the property was being put up for sale and this is as of March 2010 through December 2010 that Lawrence Myerson's name appears in the uh, fee statements for James Boutelier with no explanation as to why Mr. Myerson's name appears other than the fact that they're talking about the sale of the property and of course now we find out in December of 2010 that from March to December which is March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November let's just say seven or eight months during that time period they were putting together this contract of sale in which they did not spell out the conditions of the sale. For one thing, they did not spell out that the sale was subject to the approval of the court and the review by next of kin. None of this was spelled out in the contract of sale. In addition, uh, Mr. Boudelier and of course Mr. Myerson, of course his involvement is by the telephone conferences. Mr. Myerson, by the way, is the attorney for the Adult Protective Services of New Jersey. Adult protective meaning protect adults, protect them from elderly financial abuse, uh, protect adults from uh, 
financial, excuse me, physical abuse. This is what Adult Protective Services is supposed to do. And of course, Lawrence and Myerson is the attorney who's been fielding some of the complaints that have been made by Nexakin to Adult Protective Services in reference to Vanessa D. Taylor and Judge Walter Kaprosky. So anyway, seven months go by and then it's discovered that the conditions are not spelled out in the contract and the judge tells the guardian to redo the contract. However, the problem is that next of kin has been complaining for a number of months about this contract and everybody involved has disregarded the uh, objections of next of kin to say, hey, something's wrong with you, you don't know what you're talking about. But in the end result, Nexican turns out to be exactly correct, that something was wrong with the contract of sale. And of course, uh, the parties were asking for a $32,000 credit. This is to me one of the most glaring problems here. They were asking for a $32,000 credit to be given to the buyer, Savio Fagaro. Sabio Fergaro is supposedly an attorney. It turns out that uh, it wasn't spelled out in the contract of sale that this person was supposed to get a $32,000 credit. And it's not just a $32,000 credit as in $32,000 exactly. It's $32,000 maybe probably more open uh, book, open credit whichever way you want to put it. So it's kind of like a, uh, a blank check, to, so, to, so to speak, uh, that, this, that this buyer is supposedly being given. So seven months pass by. It turns out in December of 2010, or somewhere around December, it's somehow mysteriously discovered that the buyer had never inspected the inside of the property. Now my question is, how could Vanessa D. Taylor, James Boudelier, Lawrence N. Myerson, Shonda Floyd, and others, including the judge, give this person a $32,000 plus credit and he had never inspected the inside of the property? Over a seventh month period, and let's say, okay, let's cut it down from seven. Let's just say the contract was signed in May. So you have May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Wait a minute, see, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, okay, six month period. In that six month period, this proposed buyer who is an attorney never inspects the inside of the property. Okay, he didn't inspect the inside of the property. That's not, not my problem. My problem is why are you giving this man the $32,000 credit and he hasn't inspected the property and you know he hasn't inspected the property and not only are you giving him a $32,000 credit and this means you also Mr. Samuel Pika who's the real estate agent you're giving him a $32,000 credit and it's not even a $32,000 credit it's a blank check okay another problem on top of that on top of that it says in the contract of sale, which again was objected to because Vanessa D. Taylor should not have signed the contract of sale without court approval. But she signed the contract of sale, put down she's a, a power of attorney, which she actually was not power of attorney. She's a guardian, but she's not power of attorney as far as the contract of sale goes. And she puts it down and uh, it states very clearly it doesn't it doesn't mention the thirty two thousand dollars which is of course becomes a problem but it does it does mention that he has to apply for a loan that's a it's a basically a renovation loan part of it would go towards renovations and part of it would go towards um, buying the property well mister Figaro goes and applies for a loan remember he's an attorney now he applies for a loan, but he doesn't apply for the repair loan. He applies for a conventional loan. And this is not discovered until seven months have gone by. Now, I, I just can't understand. You gave him a $32,000 credit. He never saw the inside of the property. So obviously, you're giving him $32,000 for some other reason. It's not for repairs, because the man's never asked for repairs. He's never seen the inside of the property. Then on top of that, you 
uh, enter into a contract and you tell him what kind of loan he has to get he's an attorney he reads the contract and he still goes and gets the wrong loan just something doesn't fit right here anyway elderly financial abuse APS the public ombudsman Vanessa D Taylor the Taylor group where is that reporter that famous reporter when you need him his name is Ken something Ken I can't think of his last name I wish he was here to do this story um, so this is a lot of questions here and now the judge has said that the contract itself has to be redone but he hasn't addressed uh, the issue of all these little fraudulent problems going on and whether that's going to continue to go on under uh, himself as a judge by the way this judge Walter Kaprowski has been asked to recu recuse himself, remove himself from the case twice, and uh, he's basically refused to do so. He's been asked to remove himself on the basis of bias. So on March 10th, March 10th, we have a hearing coming up against Vanessa D. Taylor in order to show cause. Uh, neither Vanessa D. Taylor, James Boutelier, Lawrence Meyerson, Shonda Floyd, they did not file uh, a timely uh, objection to the order to show cause and verified complaint so they may face default judgment on March 10th racial discrimination in New Jersey courts there's a continuing damage claim for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars against Judge Walter Kaprowski Judge Joseph Brennan Tara Wilson as an individual the Essex County and the Essex County Board of Freeholders this case involves damages and interference with prospective economic advantage for property with rental value of over one million dollars so that's a claim for damages against these parties for interference with prospective economic advantage over a property with rental value of over one million dollars conform cover sheets have still not been received for certain documents sent to the Essex County Courthouse for filing the damage claim of December 26, 2010, as amended, was received by the surrogate's office December 30, 2010. It was sent by fax December 26, 2010. The questions posed have still not been answered. It is now almost two months past the damage claim. Other than racial discrimination and retaliation, what is the reason for the delay in providing the documents requested? This is in a fax and email to uh, Judge Joseph P. Brennan and also the surrogate's office of Essex County. The conformed copy for the following document received by the court for filing dated September 13th and served September 14th, 2010, that's five months ago, received by the surrogate's office and or Judge Walter Kaprowski. The documents entitled Supplemental Declaration and Opposition by next of kin to July 29th order to show cause and complaint for amended judgment to sell property. A PDF copy of the cover sheet for this document is attached. In addition, as all parties know, the judge appears to have communicated with all parties except next of kin as regards taking the February 10th hearing off calendar prior to the February 2nd response filing deadline. Question, what is a judge's ethical obligation upon receiving from a litigant a letter which attempts to communicate privately to the judge information concerning a case that is or has been pending? A judge shall not permit or consider improper ex parte or other private communication concerning the merits of a pending or impending judicial proceeding. Documents from court clerk Tara Wilson indicate the proper fees were received months ago, yet there are still documents outstanding from over a year ago. Mr. Myerson, Mr. Bootlear, and Shonda Floyd are asked to file attorney judicial discipline complaints against Judge Brennan and Kaprowski for their misconduct in this regard. Signed February 24, 2001, copied to New Jersey Public Guardian Helen Dodick. Mr. Myerson and Mr. Bootlear do have duties under the rules of professional conduct of New Jersey. Stay tuned for more information.